I've always been fascinated by video games, especially the ones without any clear objective. My favorite kind was sandbox games, because they wouldn't tell you what to do. Instead you had to come up with ideas on your own. And often these games would give a glimpse into what it might feel like to make a game yourself. I remember spending hours upon hours in Gary's Mod trying to figure out the intricacies of how the engine worked. To this day I still consider it one of the greatest games ever made exactly because it wasn't a game. It was something more. I was always on the lookout for a new sandbox game or mod that I could delve into. I went from Powder Game to Gary's Mod to Warcraft 3 World Editor. He has spent months making custom tower defense maps and just goofing around with the engine. But I still wanted to make a game of my own. And as fun as some of these tools were, I just wanted something simple that would allow me to do that. So I downloaded Unity. Thanks to all the awesome patrons. All right, the story is not over. Unity was still in early stages at this point, and no one had really heard about it. Instead, I picked up Game Maker. Not Game Maker Studio as you know it. Back then, it was, well, different. Game Maker was fun, but I quickly found myself searching for something more, especially because I wanted to experiment with 3D. For this reason, I started using Blender. Now, those of you who've been following this channel for a while probably know that I'm a terrible 3D modeler. Seriously. It's bad. So instead of failing at making realistic renders, I embarked upon Blender's visual scripting solution. And I actually succeeded in making a few smaller games. Of course, the visuals were made up of cubes, but still, we all have to start somewhere. But something about programming visually didn't feel right. This was probably mostly because of how limited Blender's node editor was back then. Regardless, I couldn't get the idea of writing real code out of my head. So I experimented with Python, Visual Basic, and HTML. But at this point, I didn't really get programming. In fact, it seemed unnecessarily hard and I always ended up feeling bored by it. I wished, like many others before me, that I could make a game without having to think about programming. So I teamed up with some friends. We were all beginners back then, in fact, we were still kids. But we had ideas and weren't afraid to try them out. Together we had a 3D modeler, a Java programmer, a character artist, and then of course, me. I wanted to be the one that brought it all together. And since we decided on using Unity, there was no other way than to learn how to use it. Ironically, I started by watching YouTube tutorials. Back then, the biggest channel making videos on Unity was Tornado Twins. Some of you might remember these guys. With their help, I was able to put together a prototype for our first game, Awake. An ambitious, ambience-based 3D side-scroller with puzzles and platforming mechanics. Of course, to no one's surprise, being complete beginners, we might have bit off more than we could chew. So, having learned nothing from our mistake, we moved on to an even bigger project. Your game. Inspired by a love for sandbox games, we set out to make a game where the players make their own games. This time we managed to get the core gameplay working, and I was starting to really enjoy scripting. Finally, programming was beginning to make sense for me. Now, I still couldn't write two lines of code without a gazillion errors, but hey, I still wrote those two lines of code. And working on your game is actually also how I got into making tutorials. Back then, we didn't have a marketing budget. In fact, we didn't have a budget at all. So we needed a way to let people know about our game once it got released. So I thought, what better way to build an audience of people interested in sandbox games than by making tutorials. So I started my first series on creating a survival game in Unity, completely unknowing that my first video ever would have over a million views only a few years later. And in truth, I had no idea what I was doing back then. But I think, out of all game developers, that's the most common thing. Learning as you go. Game development is a bit like jumping into the water before knowing how to swim. All you can do is hope that somehow you find a way to float. But that's also what makes it so exciting. All projects are different, and with each one comes a new set of challenges that are even more complicated than the previous ones. It's exciting, but it's also easy to lose track. Sometimes you just have to remind yourself to look back at how far you've come. I still remember the thrill of getting the character moving around the screen. In fact, I still get some of that thrill when I do the same thing now. But thankfully, the end result is a lot better. And in five years, I'll probably look back at the games I've made lately and think of a million ways they could be improved. I guess we'll just have to wait and see. Thanks to all the awesome Patreon supporters who donated in November, and a special thanks to Judaman, Amin Arusi, Infinity PPR, Hans Hoftoon, Cyborg Mummy, Derek Heemskirk, Faisal Marify, James P, Dan Evans, Thomas Woli, Superman the Great, John Beauregard, Cole Cabral, Jason Latito, Alex Rukitsky, Manolis, James Rogers, Robert Bund, Rob Fern, and Erasmus. You guys rock.